In some big time news today, Vince McMahon has sold off over $100 million worth of shares in TKO stock, which have many wrestling fans believing that he will do something with that money. Will he start a new wrestling company? Will he start another football organization? What is he going to do with all that money? I'm going to tell you everything we know about the situation so far, what could happen. We're also going to be talking about AEW Dynamite ratings, the lowest or one of the lowest ratings in AEW Dynamite history in the key demo. And things are not looking good for Dynamite in that respect. So much to talk about in this video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. All right, so let's talk about the Vince McMahon sale of stock. I'm going to read from a Variety article. This is Variety uh, article written by Todd Spangler. It says, quote, Vince McMahon, the founder and former CEO of wrestling entertainment company WWE, received about $100 million through a sale of about 3.5 million shares of TKA, TKO Group. TKO Group was formed last year through the Endeavor-led merger of UFC and WWE. Endeavor maintains a majority interest in TKO. Now, that's interesting to note there because one thing that fans have always asked, like, how is Vince McMahon going to, you know, get his way back into WWE? For all those fans who believe that, that is not going to happen. TKO, Ari Emanuel, own the controlling shares. So, continues. McMahon's latest sale of TKO... Uh, stock comes after he netted $408 million through a separate sale of shares earlier this month and after he sold 8.4 million shares of Class A common stock in TKO worth, uh, worth $670 million last November. As told, to date, he has earned almost $1.2 billion through TKO stock sales now that of course is big time there's a little bit more that we're going to talk about in from that article but first let's touch on that obviously Vince McMahon has been selling off TKO stock like it's nobody's business uh, a 1.2 billion dollars worth of stock at a for a company that's valued at about nine billion dollars according to that sale is no small feat of course you know the the big deal and the big reason why people are talking about this is because Vince is no longer with TKO. That's why this is so significant. Vince McMahon, of course, was ousted after the horrific, disgusting, and vile allegations against him came to light by a lawsuit that was filed by Janelle Grant. I've covered that in many videos. And now, since he has nothing to do with the company, since he's officially retired, resigned, whatever you want to call it, that money that is sitting there, that money that is is essentially waiting for to be spent is now available for Vince McMahon to sell. So, I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer that he would sell the the shares. I think that one thing that, you know, a lot of people in, in TKO and a lot of people ha have believed for a while now is that, you know, Vince was going to sell this off. And, and TKO has been pretty blunt about this. They have said this in... In, in investor calls that, you know, they don't really talk to Vince. They don't know what his uh, what what his motivations are for selling, what his motivations are for keeping stock. They don't really care, but that they are making it clear, they have made it clear, I should say, that he has nothing to do with TKO, WWE, or any of the involved businesses. Now, of course, $1.2 million, as I said before, it's a pretty penny, and you can do a lot with that amount of money. And it's leading many to believe that Vince may start his own wrestling company, that Vince may start another football league or something like that to try to re-legitimize himself, be the guy in charge. And to that, I will say that I highly doubt that Vince McMahon will start a new wrestling company. Could he? Of course he could. $1.2 billion is more than enough money to put forward as a down payment. And even though Vince McMahon is seen as a scumbag, Vince McMahon is seen as a million like things, uh, there are people who would try to get money behind it. Now, would it be a... Now, here's the thing. I don't believe that a company led by Vince McMahon, whether it's wrestling, football, or anything, could get on television easily. 
the toxicity that Vince McMahon brings through his involvement in these horrific, shocking, disgusting allegations is going to trump, I think, any amount of money that a company or a network could make with Vince McMahon at the helm. You also have to factor in that it's kind of a well-known thing, you know, uh, largely that Vince's last run with WWE, his last creative run was not great, that he was not putting out things that people wanted to see. That WWE largely, when Vince McMahon's final few years, WWE largely was relying on the fact that they were WWE and relying on the clout of very talented individuals who were not named Vince McMahon, who were the superstars in the doing the action in the ring, to carry the load. Like, WWE creative was not great under this guy, especially the last, like, 15 years. So to say that, you know, he could just start a new wrestling company and it would be great and he would get all this money and it would, it would rejuvenate the wrestling business, I just don't think that there's going to be the amount of interest in Vince McMahon uh, as there would be, uh, you know, without these allegations. I think the allegations kind of really really ruin um, a a any chance that that would have to uh, succeed. Now, um, there is another little bit of this uh, that I do want to go over. And, and basically, you know, like it, it talks about, you know, collateral that Vince has basically putting up against some potential uh, uh, of liability that WWE has. Um, according to the SEC filing Thursday by TKO, McMahon's latest stock sale was to an unidentified bank with 3.484 million shares transferred over the course of 15 business days. Upon such physical settlement, McMahon received in the aggregate approximately $100 million from the bank. Per the filing, McMahon now owns 11.5 million dollars uh, excuse me 11.5 million shares of TKO group according to the March 28th filing goes on to say TKO disclosed in its most recent 10q that McMahon had pledged 3.84 million dollars of his class A shares as quote collateral to secure his obligations under a prepaid forward contract with Morgan Stanley Bank unquote in addition McMahon has pledged $7.7 .7 million of his shares as, quote, collateral to secure his obligations under loans from Morgan Stanley Private Bank National uh, Association. TKO noted that, quote, some or all, unquote, of these shares may be sold by the banks, quote, upon the occurrence of events set forth in the applicable documents governing such obligations. So, a lot of corporate speak, a lot of a lot of stock speak, a lot of a lot, a lot of stuff being said, right? Um, basically, the the important thing to note here is that Vince Mc, basically like they are identifying and and acknowledging, I should say, the agreements that Vince McMahon is going to be selling these stocks to Morgan Stanley. That seems to be the case. Um, it, like it's not explicitly said, but it's basically out out there for everyone to to know. Um, the, the interesting thing that was noted there too, is that Vince still, after all of these sales, um, maintains a good amount of stock in TKO. He still has about 11.5 million shares. I would suspect that a lot of those are going to be sold off eventually. This, you know, we also, at this point, don't know too much about how much, if any of the, the stock. Or, or how much of that stock is going to be like you know tied up with potential liability that WWE has with this lawsuit or with other things that may come of the SEC investigations against Vince McMahon, the federal investigations. There's still a lot to be determined here, but a lot of noise, a lot of stuff. Do I think Vince is going to be starting a wrestling company anytime soon? I do not think so. But one thing I do know is that y'all have thoughts about it. So let me know in the comment section. But another thing I know about someone who started a wrestling company is that the one and only Tony Khan is very, very unhappy about the latest AEW Dynamite rating. Let's talk about this. So AEW Dynamite this week, you know, it, there was a lot of talk about the crowd, how small it was. It was like 4,000 people in an arena that hosts about 19,000. Usually I'm not big into talking about the ratings or anything like that. However, along with the small crowd, the ratings for this show were not great. AEW Dynamite on Wednesday in its normal time slot 
garnered 747,000 viewers uh, and a 0.23 rating in the key 1834 demo, which is really the key demo that uh, people care about when they're discussing ratings. And this was, for context, the lowest rating that Dynamite has had since the Tuesday Night War they had with NXT a few months ago. And the lowest rating they've had in their current Wednesday at 8 p.m. time slot, their normal time slot. This is the lowest rating they've had in that time slot since June of 2020. Obviously, it is not great. And this is not me saying, oh, AEW is going out of business, AEW. No, but from a business standpoint, there is there should be a worry about the ratings. Ratings are going to decline. That is the nature of television right now, unfortunately, for AEW and basically everything else on TV. The nature of television is that no matter what, ratings are going to decline. And, you know, th there is like a certain percentage that will always do that. Does that mean AEW is not going to get paid the amount of money that they're seeking? No, I think AEW will get paid a big increase on their current right fee, like massive increase on their current rights fees. But I don't necessarily think that, you know, it's – it's it is indicative, I think, of an issue that AEW is having because they are not as hot as they were in, in 2020, 2021. And I think part of it is that, you know, they were kind of coasting for a bit – on being the new kid in town, on being the new exciting uh, brand, you know what, what was the, uh, the the TNT teasers that they would uh, put out there? Uh, it was a, a new league, like a new league, like that was their l slogan for a while there. So, but ever since then, like they have become more and more of an established brand, but they haven't necessarily built out the systems in place to, you know, I think you know grow where they need to. And I think part of where they need to grow is like in their marketing and, and, and being that and having that consistency with like telling people like you need to watch next week. Here's why there's always going to be a certain amount of people who watch the show every week. Like still to this day, there's like 300,000 people who, are, who will watch rampage live every single week, even though it's a tape show and it's at 10 PM on a Friday, there's always going to be a certain subject of the audience that always watches live. And that's great. However, you need that to be as big as possible. I think some of this could be alleviated if and when they end up going on max. But right now, a, a, two point, a .23 rating and a 747,000 people is not good. AEW has not hit a million since, I believe, January of last year in the overall demo. Or, excuse me, in the overall viewership. And it's the, the ratings have been, like, basically, they've been hitting that ceiling at about 825 at this point. Like, 825,000 uh, has been the ceiling and you know, that's, uh, it, it, I want to say, I'm not going to say it's worrying. I mean, it is worrying, but I'm not going to say it's like, you know, AEW's failing. No, they are still one of the top shows in their time slot. And a lot of times, and th there are weeks I should say, they're still number one. But when you factor in March madness, when you factor in like that kind of stuff, of course, like they're going to take a bit of a hit, but like, this is a massive hit for them to take. Like, and I think that if there was ever a time for them to pivot in their strategy of how they present, you know, the 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 upcoming dynamites, how they promote that kind of stuff, it's now because a lot of times you're still seeing they ma announce matches on Twitter like the day a day or two before, which is fine, okay, whatever, but it's it's not giving that sense of urgency that you must watch. And if people aren't on Twitter, they're not going to get the message necessarily. Like they have to get out of this thinking, in my view, that everything like. You know, people on Twitter see everything, but also, like, that people are just going to watch no matter what. Uh, like, it's one thing to keep viewership when you got them, but it's a totally another whole other thing to try to get them in the door. And I think that's the issue that AEW is having. I think they can figure it out, but it'll take definitely some some trial and error on their part. But, again, I'm not going to be doomer about this. There's going to be a lot of YouTubers out there who tell you, AEW's in the mud. It's over. It ain't all that. I think there are certain changes they need to make, but overall, like the company's still going to be profitable in a few years. Like it's going to be fine, but that number is not great. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat that part. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I want to hear from you. What do you think about the AW Dynamite number? Is it an anomaly? Hopefully, will it be better? Hopefully, next week. Let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know what you think about the Vince McMahon situation. Be sure to smash that like button as well as. 
helps more people see the video. Subscribe for daily videos and hit that notification bell so you never miss one. Until next time, guys, keep it real.